My name is John Robbie, uh, born in Ireland. I was a rugby player, uh, played for Ireland, the British and Irish Lions, came out to South Africa, um, got involved in sports radio with 702. I was a sports reporter. And then when they went to talk radio, I decided to go for it, to, to, to go into talk radio and started my program on, I think, the 26th of January, 1990. So I used to prepare, you know, almost over-prepare. And, and one of them was this issue that had been rumbling for a while, Eugene de Kock coming up for parole. Now, Eugene de Kock, of course, was this notorious hit squad murderer uh, in the old South Africa. He was known as Prime Evil. He'd gone to the TRC, apparently had, had um, given full disclosure, but he'd been put in jail because one of the people he murdered, a security guard called Yapi Maponya, who he'd executed with a spade, it was seen to be not political, and he'd gone to jail, and he'd done his time. 20 years on, you know, it'd gone in a, in a flash, and suddenly there was talk about parole. And I said, well, look, has he fulfilled the conditions for parole? Has he given full disclosure? Has he shown remorse? Has he assisted the families of the victims? And by all accounts, this he had complied with. So I said, well, if you've got a system, even if you disagree with it, and he has obeyed the system, I think he should get parole. And suddenly, of course, this ignited a, a massive, massive debate from all sides, I mean, for and against. Then I got a phone call from a guy called Pete, and uh, Pete came on and he said, uh, my name is Pete Crocramp, I'm a professor at UJ, I'm a political professor, and I visit uh, Eugene de Kock in jail, and I just want to say that what you've said is absolutely true. So something made me say, and I don't know where, it just came, I said, could I meet him? And, oh, Kroc, I said, I don't know, it's not up to me, I don't think so, oh, sorry, sorry, what 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 And that was fine, great show, and then afterwards we were relaxing for half an hour before we had the post-production meeting, and I got a phone call, and it was Pete Crocamp, and he says, uh, John, I couldn't say it on air, but um, we're seeing... Eugene next week, he's going out with the prisons people and they've said, you can meet him. So I said, fantastic, can I bring my, I said, no, no, you've got to come alone. So the next Friday, I went out after the show and I'm driving and we found this tea room and, uh, and then I could see Eugene de Kock, you know, the dark rimmed glasses and the stack body and so on and, and just exactly as the pictures had shown him, a little, a little bit uh, uh, more weight, shall I put it that way, met him you know, Eugene de Kock, quite nervous, shook hands with him. And we, we walked over to this table. Next second, Eugene de Kock sneezed. He, you see? Oh, all right. And then he <laughs> sneezed again and again. And I looked at him and I realized he was laughing. I said, what? And he actually kept laughing as we walked. And by the time we got to the table, he was laughing out loud. And then I started to get irritated because I'm here to have this thing. And so I said, look, what the hell's going on? And Crocamp said, um, go on, Eugene, tell him. So Eugene de Kock put his head up to me like that. And he said, in the early 90s, I was told to assassinate you with a crossbow. And I thought, wow. And the hairs on my arms rose up like that. And we sat down and I'm talking to this notorious killer who's now said that he was told to assassinate me in this most terrible way. And when I recovered, I said, um, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm still alive. Why, why, why didn't you do it? And he said, because I killed people who were planting bombs, or I thought were planting bombs, not people who had a different view from mine. And I said, but if you hadn't had that view, would I be dead? He said, of course. And I said, would you have killed me with a crossbow? He said, no, you'd have been a victim of crime. And that was the story that I got and, and led to the most amazing uh, discussion with this man. I suppose the overall reaction is one of, you know, fear, but also of, of almost joy. Because doing what I did, the apartheid regime thought I was somebody worth eliminating. I wear that as a badge of honor.